My name is Mike Chair, and I'm all here with my wife, Summer. And today we're making a staple in Hawaii. It is called just fried rice. And so, why don't you go ahead and tell us what we got going on here. Uh, we've we've um, cooked it in sesame oil. This is the garlic, fresh garlic from our garden. And um, getting it going, getting it a little bit of brown to it, and um, we'll start throwing the ingredients in. Yeah, let's start over here with two organic fresh eggs. That's all that Summer will buy us right now because she cares about our health. But again, you can just get these fresh eggs from just about anywhere, obviously. Uh, fried rice in Hawaii is pretty much a staple. It is something that uh, if you can't make a good fried rice, then maybe we just don't want you to come to the party. But that's kind of exactly how Summer ended up finding out that uh, this particular recipe was something that she wanted to get done. Yes, um, I got this recipe in the mail. I had to pay my, my Hawaiian electric bill and uh, they <laughs> send in recipes uh, with it. So I thought, oh, that sounds delicious. So, okay, so if maybe you're unlike us, you don't get recipes in the mail from your electric company, this is a good way to make your fried rice. Okay, so what do we have here? What, what comes up next? Okay, so uh, we're gonna have uh, about two cups of uh, vegetables. You can put any kind of vegetables you want. Toss it in there. Now, of course, you can use fresh vegetables. Today we're using a uh, quarantine style uh, frozen vegetables fresh from that refrigerator that you see behind us. So this is a mixture of carrots and um, green beans, uh, green peas, and broccoli, and corn. All right, so what goes in next? All right, then you're gonna put the rice in. And here's a trick too. As far as the rice goes, you don't really want to use fresh rice. What we recommend is using day-old rice. So if you have a feeling that you might want to cook this on say a Sunday, Sunday afternoon or whatever, go ahead and make the rice the previous night. And that's the trick because the day-old rice is just a little firmer. It's not gonna be as moist. It's not gonna get soggy. And you don't want any soggy fried rice. That is something you definitely don't want. That's gonna ruin the party. So what's next? Okay, so I have some sesame oil. Um, this is about two tablespoons. So I just pour that in there. And then I have uh, oyster sauce. This is about five tablespoons. And then here's the soy sauce, of course. Yeah, we put two or three tablespoons. Uh, you can just go by taste. And then we have, last but not least, we have our pepper. You want to get a little kick. More, yeah, and you can put other things like, you know, cracked red pepper if you want a little kick. So again, we're gonna show you this right here. This is oyster sauce, right? You can also substitute hoisin sauce if you would like, but really any any of these will do. They, they kind of just give us that nice little sweetness that, that you kind of need in the Hawaiian style fried rice. And as she was talking, this is the aloha shoyu or soy sauce that we end up loving. There's so many different types. This just happens to be our favorite. And that one you're gonna have to get on Amazon because we haven't been lucky enough to find it out here just yet. And then as far as your sesame oil, again, this is what we got. I believe we got this at Asian Market, mm -hmm. right? So you can just get it just at about anywhere. Most places have this. All right, this is starting to come together pretty nice. The trick is you wanna get rid of all the white, okay? Just keep on adding the amount of soy sauce and hoisin sauce that you like until the white goes away. And you don't want to burn everything either. You don't want that, that burnt flavor. What you really want to taste is there's a little bit of salt, a little bit of sweet, and a little bit of kick from that pepper. Looks like it's done. And just like that. And here's the other thing. If you'd like, this is a vegetarian style, but if you'd like, you can put in like little assortments of meat. In Hawaii, you'll end up putting Spam, you might end up putting in a little bit of luncheon meat, you might end up putting in some sausage, but you can really just add whatever types of protein you would like. And here's a great thing. You can have it for breakfast, you can have it for lunch, you can have it for dinner, you can have it for just about any old snack. This is pretty much a favorite of ours. And I hope it becomes a favorite of yours too. So if you want the recipe, just go to WMUR.com and we appreciate you allowing us to bring our kitchen into your kitchen. And thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. 
everybody, Amy Camino here. I'm in my own kitchen at home because we're all at home these days and uh, we're gonna do a little cook's quarter from home. I don't know about you, but we are cooking a lot here at our house. Uh, today we're gonna make a dish that it's a recipe my mother gave me years ago and it's super popular in my family. My own mother-in-law makes this dish a lot now. We call it tomato a la torte. I don't know that it's my mother's original recipe, but she is my source on this. We simply start with um, a store-bought Pillsbury refrigerated pie crust. I pre-baked this for nine minutes in a 400 degree oven. I used a fork to pierce it so it wouldn't bubble up on the bottom. This is Gruyere cheese. You find this in your fancy cheese section, usually next to the deli. I sliced it thin and we are gonna layer that Gruyere cheese generously uh, to cover the entire bottom of this pie crust. What I love about this tomato a la torte is you can serve it hot or you can serve it at room temperature. It's great for a ladies luncheon. It's great for a Sunday lunch. It pairs nicely with a green salad. I think tonight we're gonna do an arugula salad um, with a balsamic vinegar. So now I've layered in that Gruyere cheese. These are fresh tomatoes. I always keep my tomatoes at room temperature, not in the fridge. I feel like it frees up the flavor. They've um, had salt and pepper on them and been draining a little bit on this plate. And we're now gonna um, layer in the tomatoes into this pie dish. The tomatoes do not overlap. They stay in a single layer uh, around the pie dish. If my sister-in-law is watching this, I want her to know that um, this is her pie dish that she left here at Christmas. So if she comes over, she can get it back. We have salt and pepper on there now. We're now gonna top it with some uh, two tablespoons of grated Parmesan cheese. Uh, I splurge on the parm at my grocery store and buy the nice stuff and grate it fresh at home. We're also going to top it with, um, you know, just about a, a half teaspoon of dry basil. In the summer when I have fresh basil, I chiffonade that and do a generous, you know, one, one tablespoon of that when it's fresh. But when it's dry, as you know, it's stronger. So that's it. We've got a pie crust, gruyere, tomato, parm. Uh, basil and this is two tablespoons of beautiful butter and that gets drizzled on top and then this goes into a 400 degree oven for 25 minutes and through the magic of television we'll show you what the, the finished product looks like because I have another one right over here Tomato a la tarte, everybody. I hope your stay at home is going well and that you're holding on to your sanity. If you try the recipe, send me a note. I'd love to know it. See you next time.